Welcome back to Bitsby Trippin'. This is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. It's been about a month since the last video. Focused primarily on family trips and work-related travel, it's left me little time to hang out with you guys. I've been capturing some pretty good moments with the family and friends over the last few months. It's something all of us on the grind should do as often as possible. Before we dive into this quick review of the Sapphire RX 570 16 gig nitro card, let's take a look at what's happened over the last month in the crypto space. While I was away, the crypto space had many new developments, announcements, and hype that continues to drive its uptrend. Announcements like Facebook's Libra, or Libra, however you want to pronounce it, while in my opinion is not a cryptocurrency, which probably deserves its own video explaining what my interpretation of it is, brings more attention to the general space of crypto. Microsoft's DID, which is the decentralized identity service, being released during blockchain week, solidifies the open source push right now in the blockchain space. They took years of development of in-house content and released it into the open source community, which helps bring more layered content and services to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in the space. Now, what's all that mean for an individual mining their favorite cryptocurrency? At the end of the day, it comes down to more exposure for the ecosystem, allowing more that are newly engaged to research what alternatives are available and what the advantage and disadvantages are. Some folks may want to gain exposure in the cryptocurrency realm via mining and will search more info related to that topic. Lucky for all of us, there are many YouTube, Twitch, and Discord channels out there now helping. I applaud my fellow cryptocurrency constituents on their efforts driving and compassion to be consistently putting out good information content to the mining ecosystem. All new folks wanting to participate in mining now have a pretty decent place to start and tons of resources being provided for free by this community, underpinning the open source nature while keeping a decentralized participant rich environment. Okay, enough with the public service announcement. Let's take a look at the recap of this Sapphire RX 570 16 gig nitro that was sent over by Sapphire about a month ago. I captured most of this content via a live stream and have diced it up for quick consumption for YouTube. So here you go. Um, so it comes up as a standard Radeon RX 570. We can see the, the memory on this is Micron. Still reads as an RX 570, but then you can see the 16 gigs of RAM on it, on settings here. So we're gonna make sure compute mode is on. The base stock core clock is 1275. The base memory on this, if I hit reset on this, is actually 1750. I was doing some testing, got it to about 2050. So it actually overclocks past most of the cards that are based of, uh, most uh, cards that, that have this memory, the Micron that starts at 1750, usually tops out at about 2000. Usually if you even go a megahertz over 2000, it just does a hard crash. This card actually goes up to about 20 2100, I think 2125. Um, from a voltage unlock, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I believe the voltage, no, not force a constant voltage. Let's restart this. It should unlock the voltage too, so we can do um, voltage mods on it for an AMD card. So 21 or 24 out of the box, mega hash, which is pretty standard with the compute mode turned on, 24.4. 20, let's just take it straight to 2050, that's where I had it before. And then we'll go with and without RX boost. 27.8 at 2050, 28 point from Claymore is not compatible. RX boost, this is with RX boost one. And now we're at 30 mega hash. We could do the M clock setting and all that. Core voltage, core clock. Core clock is going to be 1160. Memory clock, we're going to set to 2050. Memory voltage, we're going to set to 900. That's what it was set to before. Again, I'm just using the latest Claymore. I have not went in and modified the Multiminer. Oh, we, we, we've reduced it quite a bit here, guys. Uh, so we're, we're holding solid at 30, and it's still way too much power. We're, we're down to 140, about 140 watts right now on card, but we're at 30. Oh, we're up to 10 mega hash, 10.5. Now I did overclock it some. So we'll probably put the range between six to 10 on RVN, which you minus 30, 30 for them from that, 30, 35, so it's 150 watts. 818 hash for 570 is pretty much standard. I will get that, uh, other, that 31 working on this card though. 39 will be... I mean, that's like half of a, 
half of like a GTX 1070. Okay, now that we've seen the basic mining stats of this card, for my own curiosity, I'll be testing some light gaming versus some other RX 570 and 580 variants. I wanna see if there's any performance gleaned from this card in other things other than mining with having the 16 gigs of memory, which should give it an advantage on higher resolution. I would consider this type of review an off topic, but maybe interesting to some. Additionally, the team over at Ledger sent over the Nano X. I've been looking at it for the last few weeks and we'll be doing a recap on YouTube around this hardware wallet for those that are interested. Thanks again for subscribing and your continued support over the years. Be sure to follow on Twitch for live stream content, including a most recent crazy build that I try to do with seven different GPUs in the same rig. Cheers, and don't forget to subscribe.